Well, thank you, Tanil. You'll find the text if you turn with me in the New Testament to Philippians chapter number 2. And I sure have enjoyed being here these last few days. I was able to come in uh, on Thursday and be a part of the meetings and heard the great preaching. Enjoyed that good message uh, by Brother Bobby this morning about the will of God. And uh, I surely want to be in the will of God, don't you? And I'm glad to be saved, part of the family of God, but I want to follow after the will of God with my life. I, I called Brother Bobby. Brother Bobby, he's a good man for advice. I guess it was... Uh, about five years ago, the Lord began to open doors for me beyond my expectations and uh, had uh, about two years booked in meetings. And I called Brother Bobby and I said, Brother Bobby, I'm seeking direction of God. I want you to help me. I, maybe the Lord wants me to go into evangelism. And uh, Brother Bobby, he was, I could see him on the other end of the line. He just straining that neck. He said, well, that's what you ought to do and everything. Just leave all them people that love you. It's what we need, more pastors leaving their churches. <laughs> Taking the easy route, you know, and everything. You go ahead and just quit on God like that. Said, that's what we need, some of them quit like that and leave. Said, get into van with that easy life, going into evangelism, he said. said. And I said, well, Brother Bobby, how's, how's, how's Miss Jackie doing? Yeah, that's what I do, quit and everything like that. I said, how's Miss Jackie doing, Brother Bobby? That's what I do, Brother Tony, just go and resign, and people love getting all over there. And uh, finally, we changed the conversation. I figured that wasn't the will of God. So last year, about November, I was preaching my last meeting of the year. I, I usually don't preach the month of December. We have a lot of activity taking place at the church. And so I stay home for December. And I was taking my last meeting, going to Memphis to preach over in uh, Memphis area. Headed down the road, and I was by myself in the car, and I said, oh, I'm going to call Brother Bobby back. And I'm thinking about just canceling all these meetings and staying home and just pastoring the church. Brother Bobby will like that because I really want the will of God. So I called Brother Bobby, and Molly answered the phone. I said, can I talk to your daddy? And she said, hold on just a minute. I said, Brother Bobby, I said, this is Tony. What are you doing over there? I said, well, I'm headed to Memphis to preach, but it's my last meeting this year, and I've just been thinking... It might ought to be God's will that I just stay home and pastor my church. Uh, it seemed like I'm gone more than I'm home. i got to raise a family. And I said to my wife, you know, she wants me there and sometimes. And uh, I said, Troy's got ball games to go to. And I said, I'm trying to pastor the church, people in the hospital all the time at funeral homes. And I said, I've got some good men helping me, but they want to see the pastor on occasion. And he said, yeah, that's what I'd do. I'd just, what I'd do is just quit traveling. It's easier when you don't have to go on Mondays and Tuesdays. Gets <laughs> close to the rapture. Said, never thing. Said, you know, said the horn could blow any time now. Said, won't you just quit? Stay on preachers. You could help. I said, Brother Bobby, how's Miss Jackie doing? <laughs> So uh, I guess God's will and Brother Bobby, I just don't, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Just like you're doing it. Uh, Dr. Seitler preached for us several times before he died at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church. He rode up, and our sign on the church sign said, 6 o'clock Sunday evening service. And he just looked at the sign. It uh, made him mad. And he, he, said, uh, he said, well, uh, he said, Brother Tony, he said, uh, what are you doing? 6 o'clock evening service. He said, it's 7.30, 7.30. So that's the next step to compromise. I said, well, we've always met at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. He said, don't you change. It'll be 6 o'clock to the rapture. Stay right there, he said. <laughs> so I'm going to try not to change. I'm just going to try to stay like God made me. And you work at listen. I, I want to preach what God would have me to preach. I want to say the right words. You come to the meeting this time especially. And after all the good messages have been preached, man, the pressure seems to be on. And I want to try to help you. I want to encourage you. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here just to identify with the great Crown College Temple Baptist Church and the work here that Brother Sexton has continued. And I thank God for his influence on our nation and what's taking place. And just to be a part of that is, to my honor, it's a blessing to be here. Uh, but I've been praying about what to say. I want to say the right things. And uh, I feel like two, two men back in the 19th century, back when they farmed with mules and tenant farmers had been on the back side of a place and they were coming back home after been farming all day long. They had a long ride on their mules from the field back to the barn. 
And they were discussing with one another, you know, trying to pass time. Finally, one of those farmers said to the other and said, well, why don't we do this? He said, it's a long ride back to the house. He said, why don't you make up your favorite meal? And then uh, when you get through making up your favorite meal, tell us what you like to eat the best. He said, I'll make up my favorite meal. And so they're riding that mules up, the, up through the road, there up through the woods, going back to the house. And that first farmer said, well, said, my favorite meal is fried chicken on the bone, praise God. And he said, I like mashed potatoes, the real thing. He said, I like butter on top of them, just kind of melting, pooled up. And big old biscuits, size of your fist. And said, I like sweetened iced tea. Put the sugar in while it's good and hot, so it'll melt down. And he got described and said, when I get through, said, I want a big old slice of watermelon. With, I'm talking about that seedless hybrid watermelon. Uh, with a shaker full of salt sitting right there. And so all of a sudden, that other fellow just jumped off his mule, walked over and picked up a stick about that long, rared back and knocked that man off his mule, knocked him down on the ground. And I said, what are you doing? He said, man, you didn't leave me anything to say, he said, praise God. <laughs> and, uh, so I won't try to preach. And I want to say the right words. I heard about a fellow who had lived in the country. His mom and daddy still lived out there in the country. And he moved to the city. He was going to send them back some kind of gift of appreciation, some uh, some monument of appreciation. So he thought, well, my mother likes nature. And so he found an exotic bird, and he sent that bird back to his mama. And uh, after about three days, he figured it had arrived. And so he called his mama on the phone and said, Mama, said you get that bird? And she said, yes. Son said, that thing was delicious. said, i tell you what. Said, didn't have much meat on it, but Daddy said it tasted good. And said, send us another and just like it. Maybe one a little bit, a little bit bigger. Amen. Said, but we like that thing. He said, Mom, I can't believe this. Said, you just, I cannot believe what you've done. Said, that's an exotic bird. And said, I paid over, I mean, thousands of dollars for that bird. And that bird could speak 12 languages. She said, well, he should have said something when I got to heating up the stove. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> God help us to say the right thing at the right time. Amen. And then to look at this crowd. What a privilege getting preached to y'all, man. This is, it's, it's an honor to be here. And I, man, I got called to preach when I was younger. I didn't tell too many people about it till later. And uh, I, I announced, uh, made a profession of my call as I got up in my uh, later teen years. But to be here is a dream come true. It's like a wish to be come true. I heard about a fellow who was standing at a wishing well with his mother-in-law. And his mother-in-law flipped a penny over in that well. About that time, boom, just a big old, I'm talking about a diamond ring, looked like a rock hanging on her hand. He looked at that and he fumbled through his pocket and finally he said, said uh, could I borrow a penny? She said, here. He flipped that penny over there and all of a sudden his mother-in-law just fell over in the well and began to drown. She died, sunk down the bottom of that well. He scratched his head. He said, man, I didn't know those things really worked like that. He said, hey, amen. God help us. Uh, that ain't that awful, praise God. Ex Philippians chapter number 2 and verse 5. Why don't we stand together one more time? And I promise you I won't preach very long tonight. I, th I thought they had one preacher at the last service so he'd get all the time he wants. But I've been told otherwise. The Bible says in verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and in things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Our Heavenly Father, how thankful we are for this opportunity to open the pages of God's eternal Word and to preach what thus saith the Lord. 
I thank you that I can stand and open this Bible and not worry that it's a Bible just condensed and combined by man's will and man's mind, but it's a Bible that's inerrant and infallible. Thank you for this Bible, this English version we hold in our lap. And, oh, God, tonight I pray you'd help me to preach what you've laid on my heart. And I pray for those that are here who may be discouraged. I'm sure there are preachers who are here. There's bus captains and Sunday school teachers have, who have become weary in the way. And I pray this would be a time of a stirring for them, rekindling. I've heard the preacher already this week mention that he had asked for refreshment. And I pray we'd leave here more refreshed and more excited with more zeal about serving you than we came in these doors. It's already been good to hear the songs of Zion sung. Our hearts have been stirred by the congregational singing, the special music, and the choir. But, oh, Lord, I come to you now, and I stand with arm of flesh has failed and will fail. And so I yield myself to you, and the best way I know how, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I want to please you. So give me the words to say, and touch me from on high. And we ask these things in the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Our text comes from verse 9 where the Bible said, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. I want to tell you, I submit to you on the authority of the pages of God's Word that Jesus Christ should be highly exalted. Now, in this world in which we live, many have not placed him where he belongs. But the Bible said that Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I tell you, I'm excited that I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad to be called. I'm unapologetically a Baptist. I'm Baptist born and Baptist bred. When I die, I'll be Baptist dead. I'm a big B Baptist, praise God. Independent, fundamental, premillennial. Amen. Slobber slinging, sweat wiping, biscuit eating, gravy sopping, praise God, Baptist. Amen. I, 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 I'm unashamed about my title. But there's a title beyond the Baptist title that we bear. The Bible said, and they were first called Christians at Antioch. Today, and we live in such a generation, such a society, that that name Christian, that, that nickname Christ-like has become almost a mockery. We're looked down on. We've been ostracized, those that believe this Bible, especially if you term yourself born-again Christian. Uh, this Christian term has become generic. You know, we've been deemed a Christian nation. Now, that's a misnomer. But we've been deemed a Christian nation. But I, I'm glad that when you get saved, if you're not a born-again Christian, you're not a Christian at all. Amen. It's a good day when I became a part of the family of God. When the Holy Ghost convicted me, showed me I was lost and undone on a slick road to hell. I'm glad He kept knocking on my heart's door until I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. That we should be called the sons of God. What a title to be called. Christian. I like that. And wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and he, we, he given him a name that's above every name. Uh, that God's highly exalted him. I think about that God's highly, the exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he, he deserves to be exalted. I think about this passage, the Bible tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, I thought it not robbed to be equal with God. By the way, his deity, his, uh, his virgin birth is a reason for his exaltation. Never was a man born like Jesus Christ was born. Amen. I believe the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and planted in her, in her womb the seed of an almighty God. That's why we have not a high priest uh, who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But praise God, uh, he was tempted in all points like as we are, uh, and yet without sin, praise God. Yes, I mean, he's born of a virgin without the aid of a, of a human father. Now, you can play down the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ all you want to, but my Bible calls it incorruptible blood. I think some of these Bible students have gotten too smart, bless God. See, let me, let me remind you of something. When you deal with the Bible, you've got to set human reasoning aside. His ways are not our ways, and neither are His thoughts our thoughts, saith the Lord. You'd be better off just claiming what the Bible said, incorruptible blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Seems like it creeps in on some of our campuses around these Bible colleges sometimes, playing down the importance of that shed blood. 
Amen. It's eternal, friend. Amen. I'm saying, wherefore God hath highly exalted him, hath given him a name, hath above every name, hath at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess, hath Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, because he ought to be exalted because of his virgin birth. Never a man born like he born. He ought to be exalted because his, uh, his, his life, I think about his virtuous life. Never one time yielded to sin. Amen. No man ever lived like he lived. Every single temptation you've ever had, he's had. Every single opportunity to fail uh, that, that you've had, he's had. But he never one time yielded. I'm glad Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed, because he's worthy, friend. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. I'm talking about he lived a perfect life. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Every single act of Christ that we have recorded in the Gospels was good deeds, friend. You can't say that about your granny. You can't say that about your papa. You can't say that about those white-haired saints in the church that we look up to. They're good people, but they're not God people. They're not like him. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him because of his virtuous life. And praise God, wherefore God hath highly exalted him because of his bodily resurrection. That's a victorious thing. Jesus Christ said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. I want to tell you right now, he deserves to be exalted because nobody ever lived like he lived. And nobody's never died like he died. But praise God in heaven. Nobody's ever got up like he got up. There's some Old Testament records of bodily resurrections. The debut of bodily resurrection shows up in Elijah's life. Elisha raises two from the dead. We find other recorded resurrections in the New Testament, but see, none of those hold a candle to our Savior's resurrection. He said, if you destroy this temple, he predicted. He predicted, and by the way, they didn't take his life, he laid down his life. And he said, I mean, he's able to lay it down and take it up, praise God. But on that third and appointed day, 72 hours after they put him in the tomb, praise God, when the stone rolled away, hey man, the rock of ages walked out of that tomb, praise God. He said, I'm he who was alive, but in de-. he said, was dead, but I'm alive, and I'm alive evermore. And he ever liveth, praise God. He's not, look at me, you say, well, I wonder about God. Listen, he's not dead, he's not even sick, he don't even feel bad, friend. He's the never, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, that believeth in me, shall never die, praise God. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Never man lived like he lived, never man died like he died, never man born like he's born. And you and I bear that name, Christian. I'm not ashamed of the title. I like it. I want to be identified with Christ. I want my life so to imitate the Lord Jesus Christ that when they see me, they say, you're a Christian. Are you a Christian? You, you act like a Christian. We have a grave responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, this evening. We've been handed down a name that's above every name. A lot of titles I'm proud of, but no title like that name Christian. It's a wonderful privilege to be called the sons of God. And I think about that name. I, I look at the Bible and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we study his name. It's a name of power. There's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's just something about that name. Old Gaither had it right when he wrote that one, praise God. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there's something about that name, Jesus. There's power in his name. I've seen the name Jesus. Listen now. I've seen the name Jesus grip the hearts of a hardened sinner. They came in a church house and they were maybe cold and indifferent. Their minds were a long ways from what was taking place. They just waiting for it to get over. But somewhere during that, somewhere during that service, Jesus got involved. There is a name I love to hear and I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music to me or the sweetest name on earth. What a lovely name. Our choir sings a song. What a lovely name, the name of Jesus. That name Jesus is the name of power. Our text, once again, he's highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. It's a name of pardon. 
The Bible tells us in Acts 4, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men. Whereby you must be saved. The Bible said, John 1 and 11, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, as many as received him, as many as received him, to them gave he power, become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Oh, yes. Jesus said, I am the door, John 10. He didn't say, I'm a door. He said, I'm the door by me. If any man enter in, said he shall be saved. And going out and find pastors. He said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Amen. You can try all you want to, but look at me. No Buddhist will make it to heaven. The Muslims can try all they want to, as sincerely as they want to, but there's no other name, no other name, never has been, never will be. No other name, never has been. No other name, never will be. Given among men, whereby you must be saved. There's something about that name, friend. It's a name of pardon. If you're lost and undone, I'll tell you something. A Baptist title won't get it done. I'm not naive enough to think we've got the monopoly on God now. Hey, you better get born again. You better that church membership's not going to get it done. Well, I'm an American. This is one nation under God. We recognize God. Wait a minute. Um, hey, look at me. Your, your citizenship on this earthly uh, clay's not going to get it done. But there is a name of pardon. In the name of Jesus. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. I think he's highly exalted because his name is a name of power. His exaltation equates his name with the name of pardon. I think that's the name of preeminence. If you want to, mark your spot in Philippians. Just turn with me a couple of pages over. And you'll find in Colossians. Chapter number 1. In verse 15, the Bible said, Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. What about that? And he is before all things. And he is before all things. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have preeminence. I'm going to tell you, it's a name. It's a name of preeminence. That name Jesus just rises above it all. I was preaching not long ago, some city not far from here, somewhere in the mountains. I think it was in Kentucky and they had a, a building called La Citadel. I don't know much about the foreign ancient languages. I have a hard time with English. Say amen. I said, what about this? He said, well, it means above it all. I thought when you said Jesus, you said it all. He's above it all. Here we have a responsibility, and many of us are, are taking a weak attempt at fulfilling our responsibility. In fact, we got a lot of Christians who I call them undercover Christians. They wear the Jesus first pins on the inside of their lapel. Now, come on. And they just flash on occasion, you know. If somebody they see that's in praying in the lunchroom at work, they identify themselves. But see, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And Jesus said, if you'll be ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father which is in heaven. If we've ever needed to declare our loyalty and our declaration to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in these dark hours in which we live. This Laodicean time, I do believe the sun is setting on the age of grace. And it won't be very long till the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in His wings. But under then, we need to exalt His name. I think about that name, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we have a responsibility to praise His name. Now, I know some of y'all get nervous about that. But see, the doxology is not just some song they sang in these colleges after the offering. Hey, man! 
I believe in, in identifying our doctrinal position. And if anybody, listen, if anybody ought to preach and preach his doctrine and believes in identifying our doctrinal position, it's myself. I'll never forget my first uh, experience in Bible college. And I called my father. I went to this university where they used to train champions. And now they train rap singers. Y'all pray for them. I'm going to say the right thing with the right spirit. I said they used to train champions, but now they train rap singers. Y'all help me a little more than that. Hey, man. Watch it. And I'll never forget that teachers teach this class. Great man of God. And I called my daddy. I said, daddy, 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 daddy. I said, I know you want me to go home. He said, you got in trouble already? I said, daddy, you can't get in trouble at this school where I'm at. Praise God. <laughs> That's impossible to get in trouble. Get... He said, what's the problem? I said, you want me to come home? I said, I'm... They, they, they're teaching a class called apologetics. I said, I ain't apologize. He said, what are you talking about? I said, man, they're teaching on the virgin birth, and they're teaching on these doctrines, the, the, the verbal prayer expression of the scriptures. I said, Daddy, I said, I ain't apologizing for nothing. thing I believe about this Bible. He said, boy, don't you know anything? I said, well, I mean, it said, sounds like to me we won't apologize. He said, that's the defense of the faith. I said, if I ever have anything to do with Bible college, we ain't calling it apologetics. We're going to call it the defense of the faith, bless God. I don't want so, hey, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want anybody confused with some, some mentality that I'm ashamed that Jesus Christ got up from the dead, praise God. I, I don't want you to think for one minute that I think this Bible, the verbal, preliminary inspiration of the scriptures and its preservation in the English language and it's 16, hey, praise God, just King James. Hey, I don't want you to think for one minute that I'm going to apologize for my position, bless God. Hey, man, help me a little more than that now. Y'all look at that. Y'all help me back here now. Come help y'all, bless God. Hey, now, I'm talking about, I'm talking about doctrinal position, neighbor. I believe Jesus Christ is coming again, just like he said. Hey, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. I believe also in me. In my Father's house, praise God. Or many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, he said, I will come again. 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 I receive you unto myself. And where I am. There you may be also. Jesus Christ coming again, friend. Oh, yes. I identify with that, that doctrine, pre-tribulation rapture position. I, I'm going to identify with that. Apologize my hind leg. Look up in here. Bless God. It's preaching time. Amen, friend. But that's a forgotten doctrine. Eschatology, pneumatology, soteriology, boy, we want to get them all dotted and, and crossed. But what about that doxology? That's a study of worship. We've been handed down a responsibility to take the next generation. I've heard a lot about the next generation. Boy, I'm burdened about it. Some of this crowd, honest to goodness, they so scared of the Holy Ghost. You heard about that one little boy. He's in the dark. He told his mama, said, Mama said, uh, don't turn the lights off. said, I'm scared. She said, son, said, there's no need for you to be scared. said, ain't nobody in here but you and God. And he said, yeah, but Mama said, when you turn the lights off at night, I, man, I get so scared, I see monsters and everything. And she said, son, said, don't worry about it. said, ain't nobody in there but you and God. And he said, yeah, but Mama said, I can't help it. said, I get so scared. And said, please, just, it, just crack the door anyway. So she started to leave the room, and she cracked the door, and she heard him start praying. He said, now, God, I know you're in here, but whatever you do, don't you move. Because if you move, you're going to scare me to death. Amen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are cold, and some are frozen, bless God. We have a responsibility. Come before his presence with singing and into his courts with praise. 
The Bible tells us, and I think about it, Psalms 113, 1 through 4, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, uh, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. Psalms 54, 6, that I will freely sacrifice unto thee, and I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Uh, Psalms 34, 3 says, O magnify His name together. Let us magnify his name together, the Bible says. I think about that, that forgotten doctrine. It seems like as though there's some of our movement who've become the high sheriff of worship. Some institutions, you know. Amen. They, they try to throw that blanket on the old time way. They come back from Bible college and they'll say, well, we used to sing those songs. They'll say, well, we used to sing those songs. And we, that, that's the kind of, and like it's some kind of, like something's wrong with it. Amen, neighbor. Like it's become, they become the, we're the one who decides. I'm going to tell you, my Bible tells me, and it's in yours too. Matthew 18. Verse 18. And whatsoever things you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever things you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God never has given an individual the right to bind or loose anything. Don't y'all get too quiet. I'm still in the King James. God never has given an institution. Hey, man! God's given the New Testament church that authority. You see, the context there, verse 19, deals with prayer. But the previous verses deal with church discipline. What things you loose on earth shall be loosened. That's what we permit. That's where we put our sanction of permission on. What sort of things that you bind, that's where we bind. That's a, that's a legal term that it stops here. This is as far as you're going. There's some things that our church is bound. We bound him while he's dressed in the choir loft. We bound that. Amen. We bound deacons that's going to sell beer in their store down the road. We've tied that up. We bound that. We have the authority. By the way, it never has been Hollywood's job to, to go ahead and draw the lines on what's fashionable. It never has been the uh, Capitol Hill's job but to sanction what's permitted as far as legality is concerned. They can try to legalize abortion all they want to, but the church ought to say it's wrong. Amen. And where two or three are gathered, it don't take a big crowd to bind anything. We've just lost our influence. He said in verse 20, For two or three are gathered in my name. There I'm in the midst of them. We just got to bind in a few things other than our church. Amen. We got the power to bind it. Yes. Amen. We got to bind in them, them what's what you call them, them prom dances. I'm getting three amens. I thought y'all all believe that. We started, hey, we started binding high prom dances. But see, we got to loosen some things too. We got to loosen. We got to loosen old fashioned audible praise. It's still a biblical principle. Come before his presence with singing and to his courts with praise. And we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. We've been handed down. Brother Tim Cruz, you've been handed down something a lot of this young generation never tasted. Hey, we've been handed down something. And we have a grave, weighty responsibility to pass it back. I'm talking about, man, there's the next generation that's starving for the old time way. They're so hungry. They, I mean, they dying for it. But old Dr. So-and-so said you couldn't do that in church. Hey, I'm glad here at Crown College they don't come back and try to correct our music program. I'm glad you can send a student here and you don't have to come back and say, well, now, we just, we learned that we don't do it that way. Hey, Amen. 
I'm glad, praise God, and we've been commanded. We don't even have an option in it. There's no vote about it. Hey, we've been commanded to praise Him. The Bible said, Psalms 150, praise ye the Lord. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him on the high-sounding cymbals. Praise Him on the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the temple and dance. Let everything that hath breath let everything that hath breath, let everything that hath breath, let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, you don't have to act like I do to praise Him, but see, you can't praise Him, look at me, undercover. You need to get in the song service. Don't wait till three or four verses are sung and then decide I'm getting in. Hey, good neighbor, you need to hop in on the first verse, bless God. Well, that's not my favorite number. You got some of those. Now, I like that mansion over that hilltop we sang last night. Some of some songs I may not know all the words, but bless God, I can hum. Say amen. Wasn't long ago Dr. Lee Robinson was preaching for us. Hey, we had I Love Bus Kids Sunday. 220-something juniors come walking in. I'm talking about, man, just off the streets. We emptied our choir off here. They came across the platform. I mean, 200-something, nine years, 12-year-olds. Filled up the whole platform. It's hanging off either side. I mean, little boys up there with beer, T-shirts on, Budweiser T-shirts. Dirty, nasty. You could see stains on their face where tears had been running down. Still got leftover breakfast on their chin. But they got to singing that song, I just want to thank you, Lord. <laughs> Dr. Robertson sitting there, Miss Robertson. And I got to feeling something on that thing. I got to feeling a little something on that. And I just I was trying to sit still and I said, hmm. But see, there's about 300 others sitting out there that's got to feeling something on it too. Man, I've never heard, listen, a jaybird could whistle that song and God moves on it. Say amen. They got to singing that thing. You got, and when they got that verse, for this church to worship and pray. Well, listen, it erupted. They got to standing up in church. You know, I like to be in those meetings where they're raising their hand where they don't have any questions. Some of them got to moving out into the aisles. Amen. I was thinking, is this going to be all right or not? It got loose in there. I'm talking about, man, God moved in. And you say, well, ah, now you hyper-spiritual. Well, when God moves in, you fall on your face and cry holy. Well, sometimes you do. But sometimes you get happy too. The presence of God will bring joy to the life of a believer. A manifestation, a, a tangible manifestation of the power of God. It ought to bring joy to everyone that believes this book. I said, man, I hope this is okay. After we had a spell, I mean, it went on, you know, it went on. And they sang another verse and sang another verse. And they sang another verse. She said, why was they doing that? Because I was telling them to. After a little while, Dr. Robertson got up and I was saying, oh, Jesus, help us now. He's fixing to get me. That gentleman walked behind that pulpit, double-breasted, blue suit. How he said, well, said, thank God for life. Thank God for life. Amen. Praise the Lord. What? said, tell them, honey, we're in some dead churches. Dr. Robertson. After the service, Miss Robertson said, yeah, that book y'all used, said, y'all sang a lot of songs, said, said, I don't know the words to them, but I like the way they go. I said, would you write that in front of my Bible and put your name under it? Praise God. I need that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, look at me. It. It's still in style. We have a responsibility to praise his name. We have a responsibility. Hey, amen. We have a responsibility. And you've got a Bible right to. I don't want to stay here all night, but I feel pretty good about it. We have a responsibility to propagate his name. I think about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ought to publish his name. The Bible and the New Testament talk about they published the news abroad. 
They begin to proclaim. They begin to propagate. That, that word propagate, it means to spread from person to person, to carry from one place to another, to generate, to produce, to extend to its fullest. See, we have a grave responsibility to praise His name because if we don't, who's going to? Benjamin Franklin said the greatest tool of evangelism in early America was corporate worship. That's when everybody got involved. We have also a responsibility to propagate His name. As I've combed through the Bible, I, I believe I found three basic ways, three sanctioned uh, tools that God's given us that we can propagate the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that primary way is through the preached word. The Bible says in Matthew 4, 17, And from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said in Luke 4, 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set liberty to them that are bruised. Acts 5, 42, said daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, for as much as is in me is, I, I'm ready to preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 1, 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. The Bible said, Colossians 1, 28, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we might present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 4, 2, said, preach the word, be instant, instant season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come. Good neighbor, the time has come when they not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap unto themselves. Teachers having itching ears. We're living there. Preach. I thank God for the premium God's Word puts on Holy Ghost unctionized preaching. Amen. I like good singing, but I love preaching. I like in good quartets, but I love preaching. I like good testimony services. It helps me. But I want to tell you what helps me more than a good testimony service is to preach the word. Preach the word. I believe our primary tool to spread the gospel is the preached word. The Bible said when the world in its wisdom knew not God, said it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching, 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 preaching to save them that would believe. Preach it. This mama called and papa sent, God help. Little potato string backbone, rose water squirting. Dearly beloved, bear me together to this morning to worship. Breathe out an air conditioner on the congregation. Mama's nudging daddy just to keep him awake. Amen. Preaching, friend. Not foolish preaching, but the foolishness of preaching. The preached word. I believe there's a secondary tool to propagate, and that's personal witness. In a day when we've moved and our emphasis, our emphasis so often has now become the gathered church. And if anybody's for numbers, I'm for numbers. It bothers me that crowd. You know how many of y'all have in church last Sunday? Oh, we don't count. We let the Lord count and everything. Ask them, well, how much was you offering? They count what they think is important. The church is scattered abroad church. Psalms 1, 26, 5. He that sows in tears shall reap in joy. And he that goeth forth and weepeth and bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing and bring the sheaves with him. I appreciate that message, Brother Smith preached this morning. Put me under conviction. It's so easy to rationalize. Well, now I've got to do this too, and I've got this, and I've got to do that. I've got to go see that family. 
and I need to talk to the banker about this, and I need to go see this couple, and I, I've got to go over here. And, you know, now this Internet crowd. Hey, man, I can't get people on the phone anymore every time I call them. Oh, I've been online. Hey, man, look up here. Man, we need to get back to it. It still works. It's still God's sanctioned way. One of the great tools to reach the masses is that one-on-one confrontational evangelism. We propagate His name through the preached Word. We propagate Him through public worship. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Half the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. I want to tell you, you need to, you need to learn to get involved in church. Learn to enjoy it. I look at, sometimes I go places and I look up and it looks like the choir, it looks like they have to endure their songs. I've, I've been in places, they, they don't, don't let them get happy. What they say, just quench the Holy Ghost. Just grieve Him. So it ain't your job to enjoy it. I don't see how you can sing a song about Jesus and not get a little something off of it. When you go talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, sir, I don't see how you can sing something about Jesus. Hey, good friend, not feel a little something. Well, that emotionalism, that shallow emotionalism, and everything, y'all just do everything. No, 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 we base our salvation on the position of the Bible. But I'm glad when I got saved, he gave me something I could feel. Don't tell me something big as God can move into your life and you not feel him every once in a while. Some of y'all got to keep on your hands, sit on your hands to keep from raising them, bless God. Hey, man! Little boy went to church. One of them highfalutin churches, you know, they testify when I point at you things. Amen. Let a woman keep silent in the church, but they let them sing in the choir. Can y'all hear me pretty good? It's preaching time now. But here they are, sir, and that little boy sitting on the front row. And he'd get excited. I mean, the preacher gets exalted in Christ, bragging on the Lord, and in a minute, Brother Sexton, he'd say, Wonderful. He hadn't been saved long, but he, he knew he liked it. Something would come on him, he'd get to, he'd get to sing the song about he bragging on Jesus, and he'd say, mm, Glory! Hey man! Or something! Finally, the pastor was approached by some of those upper crust in the church. Where, you know what the upper crust is? Just a few crumbs up at the top. Now, Pastor, now, Pastor, uh, we're going to have to, um, you're going to have to calm him down. He's disturbing our worship. No, what he's doing is worshiping. He's disturbing your sleep. He ain't disturbing nobody's worship. He's worshiping. He's disturbing their sleep. Say, man! He's disturbing their rest time. Oh, I just saw that and racket and everything. Said, you know, our our church. I had one in college just coming out long ago. Now, our church. The reason we don't allow any of that at our school, right? Because we have a, a, a unique situation. I said, is that why y'all don't run buses too? Because y'all got a unique situation. Hey, man! It's preaching time now. It's preaching time now. That little boy sitting on the front row. We just can't, all that. We can't even hear the preacher when all that's going on. We can't even understand. You've got these speakers hanging everywhere. You can't hear the preacher. You ain't trying to hear the preacher. All them college boys get excited, jump up. Well, they, I've learned a long time ago. All that wildfire. What about that wildfire? Well, I've learned there's enough bicycles in the church to cool it down. Bless God. Hey man! Hey man! Hey man! That little boy sitting down there, and that little preacher comes up and said, "Now, buddy, said I know you like to praise the Lord and everything." He said, "But you, you know, you're disturbing some of our members. They can't concentrate on the message or whatever they think they can't do." And said, uh, "If you could just calm down," said, "You know that little red pair of cowboy boots?" 
that we have up there. You've seen them at the, at the dime store, that nice red pair of cowboys with them bullhorns sewn on them. He said, yes, sir. He said, if you just hold it down one service and I'll get all carried away. He said, I'll buy you that pair of boots. I don't know how he did it, but in a church like that, next Sunday morning, he's sitting on the front row, and they said something that got on him. I don't know where he came from, but it, something happened. They said something about Jesus, something about the blood, something about that blood, something about that blood, something about that Bible's infallible, impeccable, indestructible. They said something about something that just set on him, just got on him, and, 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 and he said, mm. And just bit his tongue. And Jonathan Tereckley, that preacher said something else about our lovely Lord and Savior. And that little boy said, mm. just about to explode. Finally, he's got to bragging on the Lord. That little boy just jumped up. He said, boots or no boots, well, glory, glory, glory. Hey, it'd save you some money to get in on it. All this stress, these massage therapies. And you've got to take Motrin's and Vioxx. You just come in here and do some of this once in a while. Long before his tongue talkers come in here and this charismatic movement come in here, look up at the old fashioned Baptist was praising God. I can tell you that. It's, hey, it's in this Bible and it's in there to stay from here on out. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, hath given him a name, hath above every name, hath at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess, hath Jesus Christ. His Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And if you think that we're going to sit up in heaven and hum through a few bars, they're up there now crying, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. They may even have a few stamps back to the verses up there, bless God. If I'm going, they're going to have some, bless God. Amen. And I plan on being there. Amen, friend. I was the other day, not too long ago, choir got singing a good song, one of them good worship songs. And, I'm, and, and, and listen, I'm, I'm not for this contemporary stuff, not one bit. But, but I'm going to tell you right now, you don't throw the baby out with the washing. One of them was one of them Gaither songs. Now, he needs a haircut, and so does that guy Penrod sings with him. He needs two of them. Can you believe he used to be my dorm RA at Bible college? He used to write me up for my hair being too long. I thought, my glory. <laughs> Joker, he got a ponytail hanging down on the back. It's preaching time. He asked me to come. Look up in here now. But they, one old fella got up, I wouldn't sing one of them Gaither songs, bless God. I wouldn't sing one. And I was just saying, well, I don't know if I'd say that or not. And all of a sudden they got up, choir, because he lives. I thought, every man don't even know. I wanted to say, how goofy could you be, sir? You, you find me at shelter in the arms of God, she's a pretty good one. It's preaching time. What about that king is coming? What about that king is coming? I know you don't like it. I said, what about that king is coming? She's a pretty good one. I was checking through that handle. I thought I saw Gaither's name on four or five pages now. Everybody all right? It's preaching time. I'm talking about, man, we've been given a great weight of responsibility. To propagate his name, you do that through public worship. Sinners, you say, well, I, I just don't want sinners to get nervous because what's the sinner going to think somebody jumps up and shouts? They're going to think he's got something I ain't got. Before I ever got saved, I'm going to tell you right now, before I ever got saved, I was brought up in it. 
I've been in meetings and they'd get to testify, and I've seen my mother testify to the pen spell out of her head. Now she sang soprano. She sang alto, but now she sang soprano. But I remember when she sang alto. I'm talking about, I, and before I ever got saved, would well, they get to testify and get to worship and God, get to shouting? I knew something was going on. I didn't even know what was going on, but I knew something was bigger than me was in there. I tell you, the last thing I was going to do was criticize it. Oh, look at them trying to draw attention to self. You don't know what that woman's just been through, ma'am. Sir, before I started criticizing somebody praising God and worshiping God, hey, you don't know what prayers he just got answered. You don't know what he's been going through. Before I started looking down my spiritual nose at somebody, hey, sir, making fun of them. Hey, I might want to get in there. Bible said rejoice with them that rejoice. Can't weep with them that weep. We got a Bible right to rejoice with them that rejoice. It said rejoice with them that rejoice. That's in the King James. It said rejoice with them that rejoice. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Hey, man. Been handed down responsibility. I'm going to try to hang on to it best I can and give it down to the next generation. They're going to need a little fire. Amen. Some of these churches ain't got enough fire to warm a chigger's feet. Bless God. Amen. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him. We ought to praise his name. We ought to propagate his name. Some people blaspheme it, but we bear it. Some people discredit his name, but we declare it. Some people curse his name, but we cherish his name. Some people revile his name, but we reverence his name. Some abhor his name, but we adore his name. Some laugh, but we love his name. This responsibility ought to be high. It ought to be high on the list of priorities among pastors. But I mean, there's another phase of our responsibility. I think it's good on occasion that we just ponder his name. The Bible said, be still and know that I'm God. We get so busy and we get so involved in the right things that sometimes we just forget what it's all about. It was in 1923 at the Peace Alliance that President Harding called to a meeting. Gathered from all across the globe, was representatives from every nation. They came together for an alliance, a meeting on peace. And while they were there, they called on President Harding's pastor to open the meeting in prayer. He walked to that big crowd of thousand delegates and mounted the podium. And he began to pray. And as he prayed, Clinton Howard, who was a layman Presbyterian, he looked out the corner of his eye and he noticed there was a dark-skinned gentleman sitting near the front, had a turban on his head, never stood to his feet. And while they began to address the Lord in prayer, he began to rub some beads around his neck. And he caressed those beads rapidly and mumbled some words. And his indignation just reached a peak. He said, after, after this meeting's over, I'm going to talk to that man. As soon as the meeting was over, he said he hardly even concentrated on the purpose of the meeting. He was wanting to meet with that man with that turban on his head. He walks up to him and said, Sir, said I noticed that while we addressed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you haphazardly remained seated and was just fumbling with your beads. He said, wait a minute, buddy. He said, these are not beads. He said, sir, these are 99 gems. I wear around my neck 99 gems that represent the names of Allah, the God of the Koran. And he said, while you were addressing your God singularly, the Lord Jesus, whom you call him, he said, I was talking to my God intimately and addressing him by his proper names, all 99. He said, you Christians have a God, but said, we've got a much greater God. said, I challenge you to match my rosary. Clinton Howard, in shame, hung his head. But even to think about as a child, I see you've heard some names of Christ. If you turn with me, just flip over there real quickly. 
in Matthew chapter number 1. He was rehearsing in his mind the names that his Sunday school teachers had shared with him. He thought about the birth of his Savior. He had memorized that passage as a child. And he thought about chapter 1, verse 21, as the angels came. And and the Bible said in verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And he thought, there's one. He thought about an Isaiah. You might want to flip over there to Isaiah chapter number 9. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. He said, that's two, three, four. The Everlasting Father. He said, that's five. The Prince of Peace. He said, there's six. And he set out over the next year to comb through his Bible, and he compiled his own list of names. He said he is called Jesus. He's called the young child. He's called thy holy child. He's called the Nazarene. He's called Jesus of Nazareth. He's called the Lord. He's called the Lord Jesus. He's called the Lord from heaven. He's called the Lord of glory. He's called the Lord of the righteous. He's called the Lord of the holy prophets. He's called the Lord and Savior. He's called my Lord and my God. He's called Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus, the Lord and Christ. He's called the Lord's Christ. He's called the Christ of God. He's called the Lord Jesus. Christ. He's called the Lord of the Sabbath. He's called the Lord of hosts. He's called the Lord of heaven and earth. He's called Jesus Christ our Lord. He's called our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's called Jesus Christ the righteous. He's called Savior, Emmanuel, Teacher, Rabboni, Master, Governor, Lawgiver, Forerunner, Redeemer, Messiah, Shallow. He's called Deliverer. He's called Mediator. He's called the Intercessor. He's called Messiah and Prince. He's called a Prince and a Savior. He's called mighty to save. He's called the surety of a better testament. He's the just one. He's the holy one. He's the holy and just. He's the holy and righteous one. He's the holy one of God. He's the faithful and true witness. He's a witness to the people. He's the leader and commander of the people. He's the constellation of Israel. He's called the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's called the first fruits. He's called the first begotten, the elect of God, a branch of righteousness, the Second Adam, the last Adam, King of Zion, King of the Jews. He's called King of Israel. He's called the King of the Saints. He's called the Prince of the Kings of the Earth. He's called the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, God manifest in the flesh. And our text tonight, wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Had given him a name that's above every name, uh, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow. He's called the righteous judge. He's called the judge of Israel. He's called the judge of the earth. He's called the desire of all nations. He's called our Savior. He's called inside of the people. He's called the captain of the Lord's host. He's called a banner upon the Most High. He's called the messenger of the covenant. He's called the minister of the sanctuary. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, he's our advocate. He's our advocate with the Father. He's our peace, our ransom, our Passover, our great high priest. He's a high priest forever after order of Melchizedek. He's called the King of Righteousness, the King of Salem, the King of Peace. He's called the man Christ Jesus. He's called a man approved of God. He's our elder brother. He's the firstborn among many brethren, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's called the master, your master, your Lord and good master. He's called the horn of salvation. He's called the captain of salvation. He's called the brightness of the Father's glory. He's called the glory as the only begotten. He's called the image of the invisible God. He's called the express image of his person. He's called the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's the bridegroom. He's the beginning of creation of God. Now we pass rosaries, Muhammad. We pass Muhammad's rosary. We passed Allah's beads. We're at 106 names. 
He's called the way, the truth, the life. He's the tree of life. He's the light of life. He's the word of life. He's the bread of life. He's the prince of life. He's life eternal. He's called the water of life. He's called the living water. He's the living bread. He's the bread which came down from heaven. He's the true bread from heaven, the hidden manner. Praise God. He's called the door, the door of the sheep. He's the chief shepherd. He's the shepherd, uh, good shepherd. He's the good, great shepherd of the sheep. He's the shepherd and bishop of our souls. He's a lamb without spot or blemish. He's a lamb slain before the foundations of the world. He's called the vine, the true vine, the root of Jesse, the root and offspring of David. He's called the prophet of Nazareth, a prophet mighty in word and deed. He's the prophet of the highest. And our text says, wherefore God has highly exalted him. Had given him a name that's above every name. Uh, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow. He's called the day star. He's called the day spring from on high. He's the heir of all things. Uh, I'm talking about Jesus now. Don't y'all get excited. Just stay calm. I'm just talking about Jesus. I'm just talking about Jesus. I'm just talking about that one that was slain for the foundations of the world. Y'all stay calm now. Don't get excited about him. I'm talking about how he's called a tried stone, the living stone, an elect stone, a sure foundation, a stone chosen of God and precious. He's called the rock, that spiritual rock, the rock of ages. Praise God, I like that. He's called a faithful and true witness. He's the apostle and high priest of our profession. He's called the I am that I am. Praise God. <laughs> he's called the man of sorrows. He's a friend of sinners. He's the gift of God. He's an unspeakable gift. He's God blessed forever. He's called the light of the world. He's called a quickening spirit. He's the first fruits of them that sleep. He's the first begotten of the dead. Praise God. He's the resurrection and the life. We're at 169. I can't even see a walla from up in here. He's called the head of the corner. He's called the head of the church. He's the head of every man. He's the true light which lighteth every man which cometh into the world. He's called the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. He's the one altogether lovely. He's the fast among 10,000. He's a bright morning star. He's called the power of God, the wisdom of God, the gift of God, the word of God. He's the image of God. He's the lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. He's called God's elect. Wherefore? 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 God hath highly exalted him, had given him a name, had above every name, and the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen. Praise God. He's called. He's called the power of God. He's called the wisdom of God. He's called the gift of God. He's called the word of God. He's called the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and omega. Praise God. He's the ancient of days. Oh, Daniel had it right. The ancient of days. He's been around in the beginning. In the beginning. Was the word. Hey man on that ancient of days. Thank God for the ancient of days. I like that ancient of days. That's a good name. He's called, praise God. He's called, he's called the potentate. He's called God with us. He's called our Savior. He's called the only wise God, our Savior. He's called the Lord which is, which was, which is to come. He's called the Almighty. He's called the Son of Mary. He's called the Son of Man. He's called the Son of David. He's called the Son of Abraham. He's called the Son of the Blessed. 
He's called the son of the righteousness. He's called the son of the highest. He's called my son. He's called the son of his love. He's called the only begotten son of God. He's called God's dear son. And this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him, had given him a name, had above every name, every name. It's a wonderful Savior. I wonder, with every head bowed and every eye closed, can you look back and say, well, I've been praising his name? Or have you been intimidated and stifled? I wonder when's the last time he took a gospel track. 